Well, welcome to our study abroad information session. My name is Ann Berger and I'm the Associate Director for Study Abroad Programs. My name is Kayla Klaus and I am the Exchange Student Coordinator. My name is Haley Kaufman and I'm a Student Assistant with Study Abroad Office. So why study abroad? There are many reasons to study abroad and listed here are just a few of the cultural, social, and personal reasons. So you can explore other cultures, gain a global perspective, learn how to adapt to the new and unexpected. You can make friends from all over the world. So say you're studying in Spain and you have international students in your class or in your dorm room, um, and they might be from Japan, and then you have friends from Japan that you can visit later on. So you really make some lifelong friendships. Um, you can also see new places, so not only the country you're studying in, but it makes it very convenient to travel outside of that country and um, say you're in Europe, you can travel all around Europe and um, also getting to really um, dive into the culture of the country you're studying in and traveling to other cities as well. And you can also develop confidence and independence. Um, the practical reasons to study abroad. So um, you can become proficient in a language or learn a new one. So whether you're taking courses in learning a language or just, you know, learning a little bit on your own for everyday life, um, you're still learning a new language, um, whether you're really diving in and taking the courses of it or just learning it from the people around you. Um, you can earn WSU credit, inspire a career, build professional connections, develop a global resume, which is huge because employers love to see that you studied abroad. It really shows that you can adapt and navigate, you know, a different um, system and culture and language than your own. Um, so you're making yourself more marketable overall as well. When to study abroad. Um, generally, it's best to study abroad during your sophomore and junior year. And undergraduate students must have a minimum of 30 credit hours and a 2.5 GPA. Um, this is for most programs, but it's not an absolute must. So depending on, you know, what your specific situation is, um, don't worry if, you know, you don't have one of these things. Um, it may not be required for your program that you're wanting to go on. Where? So you can choose from programs all over the world. Um, and I'll talk about, you know, how we can, you know, send you abroad. But um, depending on where you want to go, we can usually make it work for you. So how to study abroad, we have um, first our WSU exchange program. We also have our WSU faculty led program, the Mid-American Universities International or MAUI for short, and our independent program providers. And I will go into detail into all of these. So first we do have our WSU exchange programs. And um, these are just some of the options um, here listed on the screen. Um, so exchange program means that you pay WSU tuition and fees to WSU, and then you pay your housing and meals to the institution that you're going to study at. Um, so listed here, we have France, for example. Um, you can go there and learn French, um, or in South Korea, you can also learn Korean. Um, Spain, you can learn Spanish. So there's a lot of different language options. Um, however, if you're not wanting to learn a language, all of the classes that you would take would be taught in English if you're not taking classes for a language. And um, Germany, you can go and learn engineering. They also have media arts. Um, Spain is open to a lot of different majors. And we're actually going to hear from Haley about her experience in Spain a little bit later. Um, Japan, there's a lot of different options in Japan as well. So whatever you're interested in, these are our exchange programs. Um, and we do have some other options if none of these are fit for what, you, what where you want to go and what you want to study. We also have our WSU business school exchanges. So these are definitely geared more towards um, business major or minor. So whether, you know, either one, it'll work courses that you want to take business wise. These are definitely more for that. So for exchange programs in general, um, a lot of students will go for a semester or a year, but they a lot of our different exchange um, universities also have some summer options as well if you're interested in that. The second way to study abroad is through our faculty led programs. So there's um, they're in the summer and it's faculty led means you go with a faculty member from WSU and usually with a small group of students from WSU as well. So just some um, examples that we have up here on the slide is our Spanish language and culture in Puebla, Mexico. 
our international leadership in Peru and global business and entrepreneurship in France. Um, this is a, the France one is very popular. It's, um, we send a lot of business students and other students as well, but they get to work with a company in France. Um, it varies each summer on what that company is and you help them do market research and um, provide them with information that you've, um, you and your classmates have done the research on where they should be marketing their product at. We also have um, shorter faculty led trips, uh, which are travel seminars. They're usually one to two weeks in length. And these programs are really geared for students who want to go to a country and learn about the culture and the language and you just travel around Sometimes it's to one country, sometimes it's to multiple. It just varies on the summer and um, who's teaching it. But these are just a few of our uh, summer options with faculty members, and they can be all the way from one week to six weeks in the summer. So those are some options as well. We also have Mid-America Universities International, or MAUI. And MAUI is a consortium of over 25 universities in Europe, including Germany and France and some others. So. Um, What's great about Maui is that it's like our exchange programs where you continue to pay WSU tuition and fees to WSU and pay your housing and meals to the other institution. The, um, the, what's a little bit different about Maui is that it provides some more options in um, Europe that we may not have as an exchange partner. Um, and it, you will just list some different options that you would want through Maui and then they would place you at a university depending on what you have chosen. The application deadline on this one is a little bit different than our exchange partners. So either whether you're wanting to study abroad in the fall or spring, the deadline is always going to be February 15th. So you really do have to plan ahead if you're wanting to go um, through Maui in the spring semester. So the last way you can study abroad is through our independent program providers such as ICEP Direct or Athena. Those are just a few we work with. Um, so independent program providers, do offer a lot more options country-wise, but they do get a little bit more expensive. So students um, primarily use them for summer programs um, to, when they go through an independent program provi provider. And so we also have um, what's called an interactive map and that's available on our website. And it's a great way um, to just be able to search and look at you know, some of our different programs that we have. And I'll be showing you that a little bit later here uh, when we get to you know, the website. And so if we click on over um, to the next slide, um, basically a lot of students I know have questions about studying abroad and how expensive it might be. And so um, one thing to keep in mind is that generally if you're going through one of our exchange partner universities, it's not gonna be any more expensive than if you were here um, studying at Wichita State. So you do actually enroll in 12 to 15 credit hours if you're doing a semester long program and you um, enroll in that course and pay your regular fees as if you were here. So it's very affordable. The housing, those prices can vary, but they do tend to be very comparable um, to if you were living here in Wichita. Uh, sometimes they may even be less expensive. And then if you're going through one of our ICEP Direct or other independent program providers, those costs can all vary. It really depends on that program, the length of time, kind of on what the cost may, may be like. They usually are going to be more expensive than our exchange programs. And then faculty-led programs, as Kayla had talked about, those prices can vary um, quite a bit. And so uh, those we do have on our website. We try to keep the prices as low as possible um, to help find more affordable options for students. So um, funding, that's another big question that I know students will have. Um, generally, all of your financial aid should apply for any exchange program um, that you may be going on. Um, if you have departmental or college scholarships, uh, that shouldn't be a problem, as well as our faculty-led programs. Um, if it's some of the independent program providers, then sometimes we do need to check and see how that might, part might work. If you are getting any federal aid, like loans or Pell Grants, then the classes must count towards your degree. So that is something to be um, aware of. And then we offer scholarships specifically um, for study abroad. And so um, Garvey and the Student Government Association, SGA, are a couple examples of some funding sources. I'm gonna show a little bit later here on the website uh, what that looks like, but those scholarships can range from 500 to 1500, 
Um, and even in recent years, we've awarded a higher amount, just depending on how much funding we have available. So that could cover your flight um, in order to go on a study abroad program. And then if you are going through an independent program provider, a lot of times they will offer other scholarships um, of their own that you can apply for on their website. And then a little bit more about additional funding that you can look at. I always encourage students to take a look at, you know, their departments or their college to see what they may offer. Depending on the program that they're going, you're going on, there might be some additional scholarships that you can qualify for. Um, one to point out, if you happen to be an honors student, the Honors College has scholarships specifically for study abroad up to $4,000 each. So that can help a lot with your expenses. Um, and then there's other options. A uh, few of those are listed up here on the slide with language departments or business school, depending on the particular program you might be applying for. And then you also want to check um, your outside resources. So these would be outside of the university um, to see what might be available to you, depending on what program you might be able to go on. Gilman Scholarship is a big one um, that a lot of students can apply for if you have high financial need. So you must be receiving a Pell Grant. But we have had a number of WSU students receive those scholarships over the years. It, is, it can be a little more competitive. So I do encourage students to start that process early um, and they can work with us in our office to help review. You have to write a couple essays uh, just to make your application more competitive so you have a better chance at getting that scholarship. And then there's other outside sources depending on the country or region where you might be going. And I'll show you again on the website kind of what that looks like. So another thing to keep in mind are our application deadlines. And that's both for applying for the program and also applying for scholarships. So we've got them listed here, you know, for fall, for spring semesters, you need to be, you know, planning ahead and applying about a semester in advance. And then summer programs and our faculty-led programs, we don't have one set deadline um, for the application. It really depends a lot on that particular program. Some of them can be as early as October for the summer before. So I always encourage students to start preparing um, and looking if they are wanting to do a summer program by early fall. So that you don't miss out on any of these deadlines. Sometimes some of these programs can fill up. Um, sometimes we might have special scholarships available where the deadlines are in the fall. So if you know that you're thinking you want to do a summer program, definitely try to plan ahead um, and start looking at those options as early as August or September the year before. Application process is really um, pretty simple to get started. Um, first step is going to be to complete our WSU study abroad application form that's available on our website. Um, usually there's a $30 application fee that goes along with that. Um, we'll communicate with you on all of those parts of it. And then depending on the program that you're doing, um, oftentimes you'll have a specific application form that you'll fill out for that particular program. So it might be our exchange partner university if you're going through one of them, or you'll fill out an application for them, or it could be uh, one of our independent program providers and you're filling out an application for them. So um, now I'm gonna go ahead and just swap over to our website so that you can see uh, more of what we have to offer and just share a little bit more based on what we've been talking about. So this here takes you to our main homepage, which is wichita.edu slash study abroad. And if we scroll on down, um, I had mentioned earlier um, about the interactive study abroad map. There's a link right here on the homepage. Um, also, we have our study abroad videos. I'd encourage you to watch those. There's a couple videos. You can check out photos of students who've studied abroad and testimonials. A couple other links as you're exploring and, and seeing kind of what's out there available to you through Wichita State. So I, I do want to show you what that interactive study abroad map looks like. So this here will pull up a map. Um, it does not have all of our programs listed. Um, it primarily has the ones that we work with the most. And so that would include our Maui Consortium that Kayla had talked about, which is um, over 25 universities in Europe our exchange partner universities, which we have offered all around the world, and then other summer and short-term programs. The summer and short-term could be ones that are at exchange partners. Those could be faculty-led. It's kind of a mix of all of those. And so you can check and uncheck these options um, depending on what you might be looking for. So if we were looking, wanting to look just at summer and short-term, then it has those pulled up here on the map. 
If we click one of these as an example, the Spanish language program, which is a faculty led program that the Spanish department offers, pulls up a little bit of information here, tells you a little bit about the program, and it has a direct link to the website so that you can learn more about that specific option that would be available to you. So now if we go back to our homepage and just scroll back up towards the top, um, in this section, we'll pull up a down, we'll do a drop down menu here for you. And you can see all the different information that's available for you to kind of do more research and so forth. I want to point out a few of these program options, pull up this page. Um, this is a great page to also start with in addition to the interactive map. Uh, if you just want to look at exchange programs or just our faculty led, just the independent program providers, you can pull up any of these pages in order to learn more about those specific options. So if we click on the one for WSU exchange programs, that will pull up our page that has all of our exchange partner universities that are currently active. And so those are all listed on here by country, um, including the business school ones that Kayla had mentioned um, are also listed on this same page. And then from here, you could click on one. So if we could click on one in Japan and pull up a specific university, this page will tell you a little bit more about the university, uh, give you ideas of what types of classes are offered, and even provide a list of ones that we've already evaluated, as well as provide estimated costs. Now, this is if you're doing a semester-long program. Um, that's what this page is going to be helpful for. And then it also provides a link to their website. So you can go and check out more information on their website um, and see kind of what, what they have to offer. If we scroll back up, um, click on in this section, I want to show you our scholarship webpage. As I had mentioned in the presentation, we offer scholarships um, specifically for study abroad. We have a general application form for that. You do have to fill that out requires a couple references. Instructions are on the form on what you need to submit, um, and our deadlines are listed here for fall, spring, and summer. Um, if we have any special scholarships, we'll also put that information on our website um, each year. That The funding comes from several different sources, um, so depending on what you might be eligible for, you only have to fill out the one application, and then you could potentially get any one of these scholarships that we have listed. And then if you scroll down towards the bottom of this web page, you'll find more information on some of the outside resources that I had briefly mentioned earlier. So one was the Gilman Scholarship. That will take you directly to their page. You'll see um, their application process and deadlines uh, of what you may need to do if you want to apply to that scholarship. There's also search engines. Um, once you have kind of decided on maybe what program is right for you, uh, a good fit, then we can help you also with what scholarships might be available depending on your particular circumstances with where you're going and how long and so forth. So we can also provide more information on that part during an advising appointment. So the last thing I want to show on the website is just going to be um, how to apply that web page. Um, all of you should have started here when you clicked on to watch the video um, that you're currently watching. And so just go back to this page and uh, follow these steps and this will kind of keep you on track for what, what you need to be doing next. And Haley's gonna talk just a little bit about that at the very end of our session. So now uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to Haley and she's gonna go ahead and share a little bit about her own study abroad experience. So like Kayla said, I studied abroad at the University of Deusto in Bilbao, Spain, uh, which is in the northern part of the country. Uh, I was there for a semester during the spring, so I really had the chance to get to know the city. Uh, and I really recommend um, once you're in your like host institution, uh, figure out where all the best coffee shops and bakeries and restaurants are in your host city, because uh, it really does help you adjust to living in new places. And you kind of start to feel more like a local and less like a tourist, which is a really neat experience. Um, so I was able to meet a lot of people um, from around the world. So like, for example, I met people from Italy, the UK, uh, Japan, as well as a lot of local students uh, who were actually from Bilbao. And I still keep in touch with all of the friends that I made uh, while I was abroad there. Um, so one of the things we would like to do was to go out um, and eat pinchos. That's kind of the typical thing that you do in the Basque countries. You go out in the evening 
um, and you eat pinchos and just talk to friends. Uh, so we would go to Costco Viejo, uh, which is the old district, and it has a lot of cool like local shops and marketplaces, um, just kind of a fun place to explore. Uh, and then we also got to visit uh, like the Guggenheim Museum uh, while I was there, and then we did a lot of hiking through the mountains that kind of surrounded the city. And so it was a really cool experience for me, just feeling like I was actually a local in the city and being able to leave my dorm room and know where I was going um, and to know kind of where like my favorite coffee shop was. So that's a really cool experience for me. Uh, so besides just getting to spend time in Bilbao, I had the opportunity to visit different places in Spain. Uh, so one of my favorite trips was to Barcelona where we got to visit La Sangrada Familia, uh, which is the big cathedral you can see in the bottom right hand corner. Um, so the building is absolutely gorgeous and it was super cool to walk through the museum and learn how it was built because um, I started building it back in like the 1800s and I think they're scheduled to complete it in 2026. Uh, so it was really cool to just kind of see how building had changed throughout the century um, and that's just something I was really interested in. Um, so I also got to take a couple of other trips, uh, one to Madrid and San Sebastian. And I also got to visit one of the filming sites for Game of Thrones, which is in the bottom left-hand corner. You can kind of see the church up top. We had to walk up like 300 stairs, I think, to get there. But it was a really cool thing uh, to experiment, to experience and to see. Um, so another one of my favorite parts of my semester abroad was getting to eat all of the local food. Uh, so I had a lot of paella, which is this, like the traditional Spanish rice with like veggies and usually some sort of meat. Um, it was interesting because the first time I ordered a seafood paella, um, because they brought it out with like whole shrimps in it, so it still had like the legs and the tail attached to it, so it was a little bit, it was a bit tricky to figure out how to actually eat that since I've never done something like that before, uh, but it was still a good experience. And then I also mentioned pinchos before, which you can see the picture in the top left corner. Uh, so pinchos are the typical Basque food and they're kind of like small appetizers. Um, so the ones in the picture are tortilla, which is like a Spanish omelet uh, with potatoes and eggs. And then the other is croqueta, uh, which is basically like fried ham and cheese, which is really good and was one of my favorite things to order. So being in Europe, I was also able to visit other countries and experience other cultures besides just Spain. Uh, so over spring break, my sister came to visit and we went to several different cities in France and Italy. I had a really great time and I think uh, one of my favorite parts was getting to walk through the gardens of Versailles. Uh, so we were there in the spring, so flowers were blooming and everything was green and it was really pretty. Um, so we did a lot of traveling in 10 days over Holy Week or like Spain's spring break. Um, it was a lot of fun, but I would suggest not trying to fit in so much into one trip because I think we went to like five cities within 10 days um, and it did get a little overwhelming. So uh, and it didn't allow us to really do more than kind of the topical touristy stuff. So if you really want to experience the city that you're visiting, definitely plan out some more time to be there. Uh, one of the other trips that I got to take out of Spain was to Amsterdam. And this trip was probably my favorite overall um, because we ended up being in the city for King's Day, which is basically like a two day long celebration for the king's birthday. Um, so there was just a bunch of people out on the streets just partying, having a good time, and selling like really good food. Um, so we didn't actually know the festival was happening when we booked our tickets there. Uh, so being able to go out and experience the local culture was like new and exciting and I definitely recommend if you see any local festivals going on while you're abroad uh, definitely check them out because you get to learn a lot more about the culture and you can usually find some really good food. Uh, so lastly I want to talk a little bit about getting involved while you're abroad. A great way to make friends and to meet new people is by joining different groups on campus. Uh, so I joined a group called Happy Erasmus which uh, was geared towards all of the exchange students that were studying abroad at the University of Deusto while I was there. Um, so that's how I, lot, how I met a lot of the people from all around Europe. Um, so we had a, like trivia nights and movie nights throughout the semester, as well as like organized trips uh, where they would take us to different places in Spain. Um, so that's who I went with when we visited the filming sites, uh, as well as we got to visit uh, Toledo and Madrid and San Sebastian and Biarritz. Uh, so we, got to take a lot of trips and I met a lot of friends through the program and it really helped me feel more comfortable while I was abroad. So definitely don't be afraid to join groups on campus. You definitely won't regret it. So uh, the next steps that you're gonna to wanna to take after you finish this video 
uh, first you want to make sure that you fill out the study abroad interest form, which is just a short survey so we can learn a little bit more about you and where you might want to study abroad. Um, you can find it on our website under the how to apply page, or you can uh, type in this link here, the wichita.edu slash study abroad links, uh, and it'll take you to the page where you can find it. After you do that, you'll want to check out the study abroad requirements for the programs that you may be interested in, and then go ahead and review both the study abroad checklist and the travel advisories for the country, countries that you're interested in. After you've done that, be sure to uh, check for an email from the WSU Study Abroad um, to set up an optional Zoom or phone advising appointment uh, to talk more about kind of your plan to study abroad um, and to get any extra questions you might have answered. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, feel, please feel free to send us an email and definitely check out our website um, and follow us on Facebook. We post a lot of articles about studying abroad. Uh, it's a great way to keep up with all of the other W students who have gone abroad before. Um, and we post a lot of stuff about what our office is doing and um, it's just a good way to keep up to date. Again, thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.